The fourth Sunday in Lent is Mothering Sunday. We place a crown of thorns and a purple robe on the cross, symbols that declare that the love of Christ reaches round the globe. It is for all. St John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. Our prayer. Help us, God, to live as people who know that we are loved, not condemned. Amen. Hello and welcome to the Nid Valley Circuit Service for Sunday the 14th of March. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. It's also, of course, Mothering Sunday. And all the women contributing to the service today are mums or mums-to-be. I'd like to wish a happy Mother's Day to those who are mums or like mums. Let's pray. Almighty God, we're here to worship you, to bring you praise and to seek refreshment and renewal through the reading of your word, through prayer and singing, we listen for your encouraging word to reach us once again. Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, in this season of Lent, we think about your journey to the cross, your outpouring of selfless love for us there. We sing your praises and listen carefully for your beckoning call to follow you in your resurrection life. Holy Spirit, in this moment, may we become more aware of your presence with us, guiding our thoughts, listening to our hopes and the prayers from deep within our hearts. Amazing, ever-loving, three-in-one God, as your love pours into our hearts, our sin is pushed out leaving us able to begin again anew. For your never-ending saving grace, we thank you and praise you. Amen. Tell the 
For lots of us, Mother's Day is a really happy day. A day to celebrate our mums and say a big thank you for all they do. For their love, hard work, wisdom and comfort. For walking with us through the highs and the lows. For being there through the tears. And big steps and struggles and sorrows and joys and laughter. But for some of us, Mother's Day is a hard day, a sad day. Some of us had mums who didn't look after us well. Some of us are remembering mums who are no longer here and children we have lost. Some of us would love to be mums, but can't. Our relationships might be complicated, strained or broken but we can still be thankful for the many women in our lives who have nurtured, cared for, and loved us. Women who have been mothers to us in lots of different ways. Who spend time with their nephews and nieces. Who hang out with teenagers at the youth group. Who pray for us each week and encourage us to keep going who teach us about the best parent, God, who adopts us into his family forever. So whether you're a birth mum, a foster carer, an adoptive mum, or longing to be a mum, thank you to all the mothers in our lives, whatever they look like, for all you do and say and are, seen and unseen, thank you. John chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. On the third day there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, O oh woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was Mothering Sunday last year when we had the advice from the government that our church buildings were to close, as were all non-essential shops. We could only go for a walk once a day in our local areas and we had to stay at home. Throughout the last year, we've had all sorts of advice from the government about what we can and cannot do, not only for our safety, but also for the NHS and other people. We are now in our third lockdown and gradually we are coming out of a very dark tunnel. And yet, through it all, we have been able to find new ways of being church to share the love of Christ in all sorts of different ways. In your own personal life, I wonder what advice you were given as we were growing up. My grandma always said to us, take your coat off, you won't feel the benefit. Or my mum asking me, have you done your homework? And the most famous that most pa parents say, and I say this to my two, have you tidied your room? And who can forget the safety campaigns of the 70s and 80s with the Green Cross Code Man and the cat Charlie who told us not to speak to strangers? Throughout our lives, we were given all sorts of advice for different reasons, safety, health, love and respect. In our passage today, we heard Mary say to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And that is the focus for this morning. Cana of Galilee was a village quite near to Nazareth. Jesus was probably invited to this wedding because his mother was known to the family. Wedding festivities lasted far more than one day and the wedding ceremony itself took place late in the evening after a feast. In a life where there was much poverty and constant hard work, this week of festivity and joy was one of the supreme occasions and it was in happy times like this that Jesus gladly shared. But something went wrong and in the Middle East hospitality is a sacred duty but for provisions to fail at a wedding would be a terrible humiliation for the bride and bridegroom. 
Mary must have been a respected figure at the celebration because they told her of the embarrassing problem that arose when they got their catering sums wrong. So, Mary went to Jesus and told him what had happened. His response was, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. And yet Mary was confident of him as she told the servants to do whatever he tells you. This story is so well known that we sometimes miss the fact that it contains the only recorded words of Mary during Jesus' adult life. They stand as a marvellous piece of advice from a mother. Do whatever he tells you. Furthermore, this story shows us very beautifully two things about Mary's faith in Jesus. Mary turned to Jesus whenever something went wrong. She knew her son. It was not till he was 30 years old that Jesus left home. And all these years, Mary lived with him and knew that he would help and find a solution to the problem. Just as anyone who knows Jesus intimately automatically turns to him when things go wrong. And he is there ready to help, support and comfort us. Last week, on the second part of our local pastor course, we had devotions and they were from Take Time. I have the app on my phone and I use it often as a way of being in the presence of Jesus. During this time, you hear a Bible story and then you go with Jesus somewhere and chat. Once you have done your talking, there is time for you to just sit and listen to him. After homeschooling for the last eight weeks, having that time before we continued the course was a real blessing. Just feeling Jesus sitting next to me was not only a comfort, but gave me the chance to spend time in the quiet with him. And we all need to make space for him and just be in his presence. The second is even when Mary did not understand what Jesus was going to do, even when it seemed that he had refused her request, Mary still believed in him so much that she turned to the serving folk and told them to do whatever Jesus told them to do. Mary had the faith which could trust even when she did not understand. She did not know what Jesus was going to do, but she was quite sure that he would do the right thing. Although Mary would be recognised as Jesus' mother, she first knew disgrace as an unwed mother. She nearly lost her fiancé and her beloved son was rejected and cruelly hung on a cross. Mary's submission to God's plan would cost her dearly yet she was willing to be God's servant. God knew that Mary was a woman of rare strength. She was the only human being to be, Jesus, to be with Jesus throughout his entire life from birth until death. God saw Mary's trust and obedience. He knew she would willingly serve God in one of the most important callings ever given to a human being. God looks at our obedience and trust even though these are not the qualifications we consider important, and God will often use the most unlikely candidates to serve him. Mary may not have considered the full extent of her future suffering. She may not have imagined the pain of watching her beloved child bear the weight of sin and die a terrible death on the cross. But surely she knew that her life would hold many sacrifices as the mother of the Messiah. Being chosen by God for a high calling requires total commitment and a willingness to sacrifice everything out of love and devotion to one saviour. In every life come periods of darkness when we do not see the way. In every life <clears throat> comes things which are such that we do not see why they came or any meaning in them. Happy are those in such a case still trust even when they cannot understand. Through his life, Jesus knew that he had come into this world for a definite purpose and definite task. He saw his life not in terms of wishes, but in terms of God's purpose for himself. It is not only Jesus who came into this world to fulfil the purpose of God. We too must think not of our own wishes and our own desires, but of the purpose for which God sent us into his world. Just as Mary told the servants, she is saying that to us, do whatever he tells you. He will supply all your need and so much more. We need to turn to Jesus in our times of need, just as Mary did. And Jesus transforms our lives today. 
And by remembering that transformation only came when someone took Mary's word seriously. Do whatever he tells you. If you want the next excitement of being a follower of Jesus Christ, then there will come a change in your life which will be like water turning into wine. And just as our mother instincts are a signpost towards the God who loves and cares for us, so this best advice from Mary takes us to the truth that we all need to listen and follow the words of Jesus. Do whatever he tells you. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are at the centre of everything we do and everything we are and we bring our prayers to you now. Today we pray especially for mums and for those who are like mums to us. We praise God for the women in our lives who have helped to shape who we are today. We pray for all those all soon to be mums and those longing to be parents. We also pray for all those who find Mother's Day a difficult or sad occasion and those separated by lockdown. We pray for those who've been working hard throughout the pandemic in the front line, healthcare settings and all essential workers. We pray for those who are shielding, self-isolating or lonely. Pray for teachers and all pupils who returned to school this week. We pray for situations that we've seen in the news this week, for the situations that have been given lots of attention and those that should have been given more attention. And we pray for those we know who need our prayers today. We offer our prayers to God in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we come to the end of our Mother's Day service, I want to give thanks for all those fearless and feisty women who help me to be the best mother that I can be. The Bible's full of images of women working together in that image of it takes a village to raise a child from Moses, whose birth was attended by midwives, who was saved by his mother and his sister, and then brought up by a princess to bring fear into the heart of Pharaoh. Women working together. I'm grateful for the women in my life, those with children of their own and those without. And we finish with one of my favourite hymns, a hymn by one of my favourite mothers in the Bible, Mary, who, having discovered that she was pregnant, goes to seek the wisdom of her cousin Elizabeth, a woman without children of her own, but of great years and wisdom. And when she arrives, she discovers that they're going to have babies who are going to be cousins close in age, and she rejoices at what God has done. And I rejoice at what God has done. As we sing together our final hymn, Tell out my soul the wonders of the Lord. 